hello how are you thanks for finding time to pass by we don't take it for granted that you support we appreciate you my name is Wanjiro Kamau and today I'm going to do a book review of a book called State of Affairs Rethinking Infidelity as done by Esther Perel however I would encourage you to subscribe if you are new here and you have not done so. Kindly consider subscribing so that you get to know us and when we release new videos. If you like the video and you think it is helpful, I encourage you to share with your friends to let them know about it and also to like the video. Before I move on, our today's episode is sponsored by Black Steel. Black Steel is a product that supports sexual health. It is a natural product. It does not contain any artificial ingredients. It contains Tonkat Ali, Maka, which are two herbs imported from Malaysia. It also contains zinc, cassia, L-arginine, and ginseng. And in addition, it also has pumpkin seeds, stinging nettle, and oyster shells. Black Steel is for the man who is struggling with his sexual health but needs a natural product that does not have side effects. It promotes libido, it reduces erectile dysfunction, it reduces stress, and it also supports stamina and energy. Black Steel is also good for the man who needs to concentrate in his tasks and also for the man who needs stamina and energy. For more details of how to get it, you will see at the down at the description page and the numbers on the on the screen. State of Affairs, Rethinking Infidelity. This is my book review. So this is a book that was done by Esther Perez. Esther Perez is a lady who was born in Belgium. It's so interesting because if you listen to Esther Perez when he speak, she's speaking, you may assume that she is French. Her accent has a French influence and you may think that she is French. It gives you an idea of whatever she's talking about because we know in France the way they look at infidelity and, and cheating in marriage is different from the Western, uh, from America and Britain. So when she is speaking and you just listen to her accent you may think that oh hey she's French so she's allowed to talk about this which is not the case she's Belgian. Um, this is the second book that she is doing. The first one was also about relationships and it was also about sex and she did a book about mating in captivity. Then she did this book. This is a book that will trigger you. Um, this is something that I just have to say. If you like the review and you think you can get a book to, to get more insights, it can trigger you because it challenges everything that we know about relationships and everything that we know about cheating and infidelity and the other is so it's so intentional like when she starts the book in the first beginning chapters she looks at <coughs> our cultural perspectives and our cultural orientations and how we view infidelity she looks at africans where everyone came from she looks at americas and britons and how they look at infidelity and she looks at polygamy and compares it with monogamy. And as she discusses this book, she takes us through a journey of how monogamy came to be the moral value. She shows, she takes us a journey through when our society was polygamy and then how now monogamy is the new norm. And anyone who is not monogamous is seen as compromised morally. Uh, the other thing that she says when she's starting the book is that she she, she she puts a disclaimer a disclaimer she says her book is not a scientific study her book is not as a result of a survey but her book is opening up our minds to have a discussion she has worked for many years with couples both immigrants and natives who have dealt or who have had feel the pain of infidelity or cheating. When she starts the book, she uses questions to, 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 to push your mind to think. Yeah? Questions that 
expound your thinking, your scope of looking at the whole issue. And the first question that she's asking, and she's also giving an answer, is why do partners cheat? She asks, is it always out of love? Like when one person goes out of his way to cheat, when a man cheats on his wife, is it always that he doesn't love her? When a woman cheats on her man, is it always that she's fallen out of love? This is a question that she asks and then she gives her answers based on her experience counseling couples many years. And there is a point that Esther says that there are many couples who she's dealt with who cheated on their spouses, especially men, who cheated on their wives, but they still loved their wives. They still loved their women. She's dealt with women who have cheated on their husbands, but they still loved their husbands. So if that is the case, why do people cheat? She can't give an answer. She says that every person has got their own experience and their own reason of doing things. But one thing that she came to discover is that for majority, which she says I think 70 to 80% who have cheated, say that they couldn't tell why they cheated, but they could explain how they felt when they were in the other relationship. They said that they felt alive. She goes ahead to, ex to explain uh, an experience of a lady who says that there is so much that was dead in her that when she got another person to love her, another person to give her another dimension of love and relationships, she felt so alive. Talks of men who don't, can't explain why they are going out of the relationship, out of the marriage. But when they went out of it, they came back and they felt like they were alive, like something was dead in them and it, you know, they were just resurrecting, just, just like that. So she says she can't give a, a, a reason why people cheat, yeah? But she can explain how they feel when they are in the other relationship. And after taking us through that journey, then she comes and asks us another question. So if people are feeling alive after starting another relationship out there, is it always that you sh they should be held hostage? Is it always that they should be held hostage where they are in only, um, only meeting with one person? Would you like your spouse to be dead if the only thing they feel can make them feel alive is by having an adventure somewhere else with someone else? These are questions she asks and uh, she doesn't give an answer. She says that many times when she asks the victim, like a couple goes for counseling, when she has this discussion with the victim, whoever was played on, either the man or the woman, their dimension changes. Their outlook towards cheating, towards infidelity changes. And they discover that it's not always that a relationship has to die. It's not always that a marriage has to die because one person cheated or one person went out of their way. But then now there's this other chapter that she's asking us, can cheating bring healing in relationships? And she goes to give examples of couples or outcomes she's had in her counseling sessions where a marriage becomes stronger when one person goes out and it's discovered, where they have to sit now and discuss why did this happen can we prevent this from happening again can we solidify our relationship that even if it's to look for satisfaction even if it's to look for healing even if it's to look for for restoration all this can be found in this unit and she says that there are many marriages that she knows have become quite stable quite quite stable after one person went out of their way. Of course, she, she's not ignorant to the fact that we are in a society that will condemn you for staying if your spouse has cheated or walked out of their way. Currently, like I'm a Kenyan, and uh, there's always this talk where if it happens, there's disrespect. If it happens, there are options and you can always go. Ignoring everything else that you know has been building that relationship and other people depending on that relationship and especially kids 
So she, she, she helps the, the leaders, you know, explore other benefits that have been accrued in a relationship and why not everything should crumble just because one person is having an affair or have had an affair outside. And then there's this chapter that she's talking about betrayal and what cheating means. For many people, cheating means betrayal. But she's also inviting the reader to explore the different types of betrayal. If he doesn't or she doesn't support your goals, that is betrayal. If they have used demeaning language or they have spoken about you to other people in a way that is not acceptable, that is betrayal. If they've not given you sufficient time and maybe they have felt like their career was more important or their other platonic relationships were more than important, that is betrayal. And Esther invites us to look at all the forms of betrayals. So do you end your relationship because he didn't support your career or she didn't support your business growth? Most of the times, no. Do you end the marriage because there was a slip somewhere? Most of the times, no. If they didn't fulfill their obligations in a relationship or whatever you had agreed on, either based on our customs, tradition, or an agreement between the two, that is betrayal. But Esther is inviting us to think, do you always end a marriage because of a betrayal? And should you always work hard feeling dejected because of a betrayal? She helps the readers to know that there are many types of betrayals. And one betrayal does not make it so special that everything should fall down. That it should, uh, an affair or a relationship outside should be in an opportunity to invite the parties to rethink if they would really want to continue. And if both feel no, they should not continue. This is a perfect opportunity to part because it has invited them to rethink or to have a conversation that they should have had before. Uh, this book has got many chapters. It, uh, it's a bestseller as, as I do this review. And if you think you've always wanted to look at um, the other dimensions of relationships, I would encourage you to get a book. So what is my perspective about the book? On a scale of 10, I give it 7. Esther has hit it. And um, she's this very serious person. Even when her talks, if you check her TED videos, Esther does not smile. She still maintains that serious look, but she's still able to captivate her audience and to communicate the ideas that need to be communicated in a friendly manner. As I do this review, there is a couple, there's something I was watching on the TV the other day where we have a polygamous man, I'm Kenyan, yeah? A polygamous man living with his two wives in the same house. And initially I was like, how does it happen? How is that possible? But when you read Esther Perez's book, you'll discover that it is the interpretation that individuals give to experiences that matters. And here it is the first woman who set the pace for all this. She didn't see it as a betrayal that was enough to crumble everything down. But she was open. She was like, if I love this person, then I will not leave him to go and look for somewhere for someone else. Yeah. And if this person is fulfilling his obligations in everything else that makes me feel special i don't she says that she doesn't think that having sex with someone else meant that she doesn't care about her or think about her that is that experience happening around yes yeah, so a disclaimer this is not a book to tell you to go and cheat my opinion and my I, uh, my review does not encourage you to go and cheat it I'm also not endorsing the behavior of having affairs, but for me, I'm like, it's a good book to, to look at, yeah? There's this other book that is called Radical Awakening that was done mm, by this American author, this lady. What do we call her? I'm forgetting her name, yeah? But it's called Radical Awakening, where she questions the, the theory of one sexual partner for life. And she questions the whole idea of leaving your partner because they, they had sex with someone else should, all, should it always be a do or a die thing. So you read The State of Affairs by Esther Perez. It's about redefining uh, infidelity. Go and read 
radical awakening i'm forgetting the name of the author but it's there is this psychologist a lady in america she's asian she was born asian she lives in america i'm forgetting the name but i, I will write in the description the name of the author just read it tell me what you think about it let me know your opinions and um yes it is it for now thanks for your audience remember to subscribe and remember to like the video